Welcome to the ACS Technical Advisory Board podcast series, where we talk all things tech including data, cyber, AI, blockchain, and Internet of Things. Meet your host, Dr. David Cook, Vice President of the Australian Computer Society's Technical Boards. David is a technology advocate dedicated to advances and progression of computing and human-computer interaction. In today's episode, David will be talking with ACS Cybersecurity Committee member, Dilip Samji. Join us as we discuss digital forensics, key recovery tools, and the handling of social media data in the modern era. Today, we're talking with Dilip Samji. Dilip is the Director of Cybersecurity, Cyber Intelligence, and Digital Forensics for DRC Australia, which is a part of the DRC International Group. Dilip specialises in cybersecurity and digital forensics, and he currently leads a team of professionals at the Data Risk and Forensics Consulting Centre in Sydney. And as well as that, he is on the National Cybersecurity Committee for the Australian Computer Society. Dilip, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Now, you're an expert in digital forensics. Why is it important that we have a good chain of custody in terms of looking after evidence that we we gather from a digital forensics perspective. Yeah, the chain of custody is very important in digital forensics because actually you can track the movement of that particular device, the suspect device. So we know exactly who did it, who was handling, and at the end, what you want to do is preserve the integrity of, of the evidence. Now, in terms of some of the changes that have happened more recently in digital forensics, we're starting to see AI become an integrated component in digital forensics, much more than we've ever done before. Can you tell me, you know, from a day-to-day perspective, how's that starting to change the way we look at digital forensics? What's happening in digital forensics, now you've got a volume of data that actually we need to, to analyse, to examine. And the volume of data comes from different sources, comes from uh, documents, from the emails, from the social media, and the amount of data that actually we need to actually uh, collect the evidence. You don't have the human time to actually uh, pinpoint the evidence. So we, we are actually using now artificial evidence to speed up the process, to co- the collection of evidence. So I guess particularly in cases of open source information that you bring in, OSINT information, you would use AI as part of doing the heavy lifting on collating that all together because that could take you know many, many months of time. And then you specifically look at the individual parts that you see on a, on a machine or on a particular, you know, a, a mobile phone or a device. That- yeah, the, the way artificial intelligence works is actually it, it creates a cluster of the, do, the documents and then you apply the filters. So that cluster actually is the one that actually has got particular evidence that I'm looking for. And so the cluster probably could be 10,000, 20,000 documents, and they actually can do within an hour. So you would use a number of different software tools to do this. What sort of software things are you using uh, to, to, to to try and make sense of that ever, that uh, that critical forensic inquiry? So, so use Axiom, yeah. forensic Axiom, use InCase, FTK, and the e-discovery called Newix, yeah. Yeah, you know, 10, 15 years ago, not everybody was going around with a mobile phone, but now mobile phones are one of the most important discovery you know, pieces of equipment, I suppose. Tell me, what are the key issues? What if, if someone tries to delete something from their mobile phone, what do you do in terms of trying to recover that information? So until the iPhone 7 was released, we could actually bypass the passcode. We can actually recover the deleted data, delete the photo message. After iPhone 7, the Apple actually introduced a new encryption mm. and it's very hard to crack. So now if you, if you come back to me, look, I need to collect that particular piece of evidence, which is a photo message. I say, we, you won't be able to, to recover. So you are, you are, this is one of the challenges actually you are facing mm. with mobile phone. So in terms of that, what do we do if in those sort of cases? Obviously, you can't compel if it's a criminal act or someone or it's a stolen phone, you can't compel someone to, to help out on that. Um, what are some of the other things you do to try and collect evidence around that? If it is, if if it, all the evidence is 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 residing on what they call a mo- mobile phone, then f- from our point of view, you, you don't have too many too many avenues actually to collect evidence because that evidence for some you can collect but it will be corrupted, mm. right? If you then delete a message, let's see, three months ago, and the, during that time actually he was using that particular phone, and then the, the data will be there but it will be corrupted. 
I guess a similar problem comes up now with cloud security. You would imagine that evidence or, or information which is stored in the cloud is increasingly difficult for you to recover. Would that be right? Yes or no. If it is in the Microsoft environment, we actually go to, you go to the channel and actually you can pull out the evidence. You had, the, you had what they call last week when the case that actually was, was trying to collect evidence from my ex-employee and you're using a lot of emails and deleted emails and the, we didn't manage to actually collect deleted email from the Microsoft Office. Now, uh, the other area, I suppose, which has really exploded in the last decade is social media. Mm -hmm. And social media is where you get two sets of information, I suppose. You get what people you know, can't help themselves by putting onto on the phones. But that must be, a, in one sense, a really rich source of, of uh, information for you. How do you treat social media? Do you have a special way of going about looking at that when you're looking from a digital forensics perspective? You've got tools that actually you can pull out, pull out evidence from the social media. So all you, the challenge that you are ever is when actually start to use different language, right? So if you, you've got a lot of people using WeChat, which is mainly Chinese. Yes. Ch then you've got a, a, other, a, other users, they use the, the different, different what they call language, Portuguese, Brazilian, Spanish. And then some of the tools, they are not ready for language-based evidence so they are mainly you know, in English so this is the challenge we are facing and I guess now with the advent of AI certainly the sort of the large language model side of things means that you can get in real time translations of different things you know at your fingertips chat you with and another AI it does help yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. if you need to but sometimes the translation is not actually accurate Sure. <laughs> so if someone was looking to to have a career in digital forensics, what would you say to them? If you're talking to people who are, say, students thinking about doing digital forensics in, in the future, what, what would you say? I think what it has, has to do is first to do the, the basic, the, the ground, ground study, hmm. which is the computer science, networking, operating system, and then slowly start to move the security side of then you can move to digital forensics because when you are in digital forensics you have to have a broad view of all the technical knowledge about about the, the, the networking about the operating system otherwise you, you start to, to a field that actually you don't have where to start i know there's uh, there are two schools of thought but a lot of the the every everyday computer science student um will go down the lazy side but i guess for, for if you're really interested in digital forensics you've really got to be across linux You've got to be across the operating systems, operating. which are much more meaningful than you can get right down into the heart yeah. of the matter. Plus, you have to be a bit of programming as well. So, so if you know Python or any other language that is good, you can pull out information without relying on, on a commercial software. Yeah. Thank you so much for talking to us today. Yeah. Thanks very much for having me. Thank you very much. To find out more about how the ACS is powering Australia's technology brilliance, visit us at our website, Facebook or LinkedIn. Want to get involved with the ACS technical boards? Email us at tab at acs.org.au and tell us a bit about yourself. Join us for more thought leadership, ideas, and information through our other podcasts on the ACS YouTube, Facebook, or on LinkedIn.